know, guys, I got to thinking. I've showed you, I've showed you the shop, I've showed you my tractors, y'all seen my trucks. I've not showed off my cast iron. So, in a, uh, a cleaning mode and getting everything straightened up and organized and redocumenting everything, I figured I'd take y'all along and show you what I got going on. Starting off in the very back corner, the very old timer right there, it's a little gate marked uh, saw spot, a little single pour spout, cool chevron gusset there on the handle, neat little piece, very light, nice little uh, hearth piece I guess you'd call it. A couple of miniatures that Julie picked up for me, she got me these for Christmas a couple years back, a little uh, corn stick pan and a little tiny griddle. Picked this little lodge, new run, you know it's an old timer, new run lodge melting pot. And uh, speaking of new lodge, a friend of mine from work was at the National Cornbread uh, Celebration, or festival I guess, festival as it does say. He picked that up for me, and uh, that's pretty cool. They're in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. Also got a couple of number three Wagner wares, or Mark Wagners. Beyond them, my last number three is a little hammered unknown. And onward to this big ugly bacon press. It's a newer press, I mean it's not old, nothing special, but it is kind of special because I made the handle. It's a little piece of beech wood that um, <laughs> incidentally ended up making a small lathe and just about losing a finger in the process, so that's pretty cool. Looks good, works good, that's all that matters. Julie found this for me at a uh, little thrift store, or whatever you want to call it. It's a little Taiwanese server, but I do like it. There's something about it that I just like. Onward to my number fours. I got a uh, number four unmarked Wagner. Number four Birmingham Stove and Range Red Mountain, an old timer there. Number five, she's got a number five uh, unmarked Wagner there as well. Number five, three notch lodge. And this poor sucker here has spent some time in some water. Let me tell you what, definitely pit it up. But like this pan and several others I have will attest to, you don't have to have that super smooth finish everybody's looking for because if it's seasoned halfway decent, it'll cook just as well. Beyond that, we got a little favorite peak of wear. Speaking of super smooth, how's that? Nice little piece there. And a little Taiwanese piece. It's one of the better Asian pieces. You see it's got all the, uh, the nice milling marks there. That came from an auction right down the road from the house. Another unmarked Wagner, number five. Onward to number sixes. Another old timer. It's a inset heat ring gate marked single pour spout with kind of an ornate handle. It's, it's a pretty little pan to have. Makes some very nice apple pies. Got a uh, number six Mark Wagner ware. And uh, let's see here. Another number, no, that's number five. Excuse me. This was actually bought new by my mother in law. It's Julie's mom. And uh, it needs a little bit of work, as you can see, but we'll get there. Up to the number sevens. Got a uh, inset heat ring gate marked number seven there, unknown. Got a unmarked Wagner there. Actually, probably closer to like Sydney Holloway or something like that. Along those lines, but a Wagner Sydney O. You can see those two are very, very similar. This number seven is Korean, but it's a good old piece. And the really cool part about that, first of all, check out that machining. That's just badass. But the really cool part about this pan, it was it was my grandmother's, and uh, she fed you know my dad, my aunts. They all ate out of that pan, so that's a great piece to have. Got one more number seven. Birmingham Stove and Range Red Mountain Series. Got that going. We got a little BS in our uh, cornbread skillet. There's another one that has seen some serious water damage but still cooks like nobody's business. And an itty bitty BSR cornbread pan. But this, this one here obviously hasn't been gone through yet. That kind of back I found at a thrift store or uh, antique store, I guess. And I believe it to be a top to a combo cooker just because it's got these tabs. Like it was meant to lock into something. It's just kind of a neat old piece and it's got a real nice finish. It's only been seasoned one time just to keep it from rusting, but uh, it is what it is. Onward to the next table, guys. I got a couple of squares for you. A new run lodge grill pan that my mom got for me for Christmas one year. Got a uh, like 50s Wagner breakfast skillet there. And a 60s lodge number 8 square back there. As far as number 8 skillets go, I got a few. So we'll start out with this guy right here. It's old Wagner Sydney O. This guy's was my very first piece of cast iron that I bought. And incidentally, I got it at a tractor show. Um, moving on from that, there's some Taiwanese. It's another one of the good ones, you know, with some good machining. This pan right here 
if you check out this link, you will uh, see this is the first one that I actually restored. It was kind of rusty. It came with a lodge lid, which is sitting on a Dutch oven down below my feet here. But So we got that going on. We got this guy here, Birmingham Stove and Range. It's a Century Series. And again with some pock marks, a little bit pitted. One of my main users right there. That is probably used more than just about every pan sitting there. That's one of my go-tos. Cooks like a dream. Another Century Series BSR that my mother-in-law got me. Uh, gave me, I should say. She didn't get it for me. She actually bought it new back after they got married way back in the 60s. So that's pretty cool. A little uh, small logo Griswold here. Real nice light, light little pan. Um, number eight, Southern Mystery Skillet, as they become known by, like on the, uh, the forums and such online, the groups, you know. But you see, you got an inset heat ring, raised molders mark, and a crazy weird handle. It's a good user. It's not real heavy, not real comfortable, probably not my favorite piece, but it's neat. I do like it. Lodge, we got an old single notch lodge with a beat up lodge lid. I think that guy spent some time in the ground or something. I don't know, but you know what? works it does the job there you go got an old single notch there no logo next that's another one of these southern mystery skillets and this guy um, I actually took to be a no-notch lodge when I found it it's not it's just another one of the unknowns but very cool little chicken fryer got a uh, another new run lodge this has the US seal on it which is flipped around here it's a little cracker barrel piece and again the same cool guy that I work with he, uh, he acquired that for me. Another number eight chicken fryer, and it's a hammered finisher. You can tell it's another unknown. Big, heavy pan, but a great user. Followed up by a new Run Lodge combo cooker. Another great piece to have right there. Beyond that, we go to the number nines. We've got uh, number nine, I should say. There's only one. It's a little Volrath. And guys, this right here is Julie's pan. This is her go-to. I think she would get rid of me before she'd get rid of that piece right there. She actually got me this. This is a new run, number 10 Lodge. Great user. Definitely good all-around pan. We got some oddballs, some misfits. You know, I got a uh, old gated Turk head pan. Couldn't really tell you who made it, but it was a very reasonable price, and I didn't have one, so you know how that goes. Followed up by a new run Lodge perch pan. You don't see a whole lot of them around. They're here and there. And uh, again, another Lodge. It's a little corn stick pan. We got an unmarked Griswold popover pan. This is my grandfather's, my mom's dad. That came from his house. This here, guys, is the uh, the very first waffle iron I ever bought, and I used it quite a bit too. It works very well. You know, if you notice, the one hinge is broken. What's kind of neat about this guy is the diamond pattern it has. There's not a whole lot around, at least that I found, and I've been looking, that carry that diamond pattern. My uh, my pack mule now for making waffles. This guy here is my go-to, an old 30s Griswold, and uh, just a great user, fantastic using piece. This is a little Asian uh, fajita skillet, I guess you'd call it. Julie picked me up for Christmas one year, and it came in a set that had like some hot sauce and different stuff with it, but just a neat little pan to have. And uh, I got just a few more griddles here. I got a number seven, old timer, old gate marked inside heat ring. The cool thing about this one, let's see if we can find the sun here. It's got a hole in it, right there. Must have been like a little pocket or an air bubble whenever it was cast, but it's pretty neat. It works all the same. I got its bigger sister here, number eight. Same thing, inset heat ring with a gate mark. Kind of a ornate handle there. Mom got me this one, it's a new run lodge. And uh, my mother-in-law got me this one. It's an unmarked Griswold, number eight. Julie picked me up this number eight unmarked Grizz split pan. Would have been towards the end of the run there, you know, when things were starting to change. But uh, back in the heyday, we get some, some big old boys here, but back in Griswold's heyday, they produced this monstrosity. And, and I actually haven't had this one very long. It's only got a couple of seasonings on it. I cooked in it once. It needs a little more work, but it's going to be a hell of a user. I've also got a number 14 Lodge. This is a new run Lodge, and it's a mule, guys. It really is. It'll do whatever you want it to do. And if that's a mule, that there must be a flipping draft horse because, first of all, you can fit this guy right inside of that guy. And second of all, anything that one can do, this can just do more of. 
It'll make a man out of you though, I'll tell you what, it's heavy as all get out. It's an unknown number 16. It's got a little bit of pitting in there, but it is definitely a user, guys. I use the heck out of that pan. Uh, it'll cook, you know, you can put a few pounds of potatoes, a couple pounds of chicken, a couple pounds of sausage, all in, all at once. You can eat for days out of those three. Now getting down here to the ground level, good old Lodge Sportsman Grill. I do have the door for it, it's just not on it right now. Sitting on top of that is a uh, Asian, I'm sorry, Taiwanese, I believe. Little three-quart saucepan with lid. That was my grandfather's as well. Little two-quart saucepan, no lid. Found that one at a, uh, nope, got that from a guy at work, as a matter of fact. That I work with, I picked that one up from. Next to that's an American camper, another Asian little Dutch oven. It's not quite a number eight. That was my first Dutch oven right there, as a matter of fact. A little trivet that I made there. Next to that's a Lodge number 8, like uh, 50s vintage, 40s to 50s vintage, with lid, Dutch oven. Got an unmarked wagon next to that, and uh, behind it, an unknown little four-quart scotch bowl sitting on another trivet. That's a cool little scotch bowl, man. I use the heck out of that thing. Got a little gate mark on it, the whole nine yards. This one here I just picked up. That's an unknown number 8 uh, Dutch oven. Inset heat ring, gate marked, but what is really cool, at least to me, about this guy, don't mind the splotchiness, but uh, it's got these cool little ghost uh, castings, or whatever you want to call it, ghost figures in there, ghost marks. So you actually see quite a few of these online that uh, are a little newer than that one, you know, they don't have the gate mark, and a lot of them actually, the lid is not ghost marked, it has the self basters like you would think that one should have had but uh, that makes that pretty cool in my opinion next to that is a big old eight quart tech sport uh, another asian piece but another fine user and i'll tell you what you can eat for days out of that sucker too when it's full my dad bought that new back in the 90s and i uh, bought it new from quality farm to fleet and now here it is you might have recognized that piece there from my uh, chicken and sausages video next to that's a little four quart uh Taiwanese Dutch oven and the lid that's on that bean pot right there will fit that kind of goes back and forth And it's not actually for either one of them, but it does work. It does the job That there is a little Gate marked three leg little peg leg bean pot next to that guy I got a couple of Birmingham stove and range fryers a shallow fryer and a deep fryer Next to those we've got a large sportsman fryer Or a oval roaster if you will the little wildlife scene on it and getting down into some spiders or some uh, cowboy type pieces, you know what I mean? We got a P&B number 10, or it's a 10 inch, not a number 10, but a little Phillips and Buttroff out of Nashville, Tennessee. It's a cool matching piece, a little gated bottom section and gated handle, or gated lid as well, I should say. Next to that is another, another uh, gated spider. Again, the actual pan and the lid are both gated, matching. Number 10, unknown. Next to that, we got a, another unknown. Another one that's been around for a while and seen some abuse, but it's definitely still very usable. Next to that, guys, is about my oldest piece. Uh, if I date it out of my American Hollowware book, you're looking like 1830s, 1840s type stuff right there between the uh, the handle and the leg. Of course, you know, you got a big old gate mark there, but. It's a cool, cool old piece. It should have had a two-part bale that went across a big, heavy wire bale, but it was two parts and it was uh, removable, which is probably why it's no longer with it. There and again, that's another one that's seen some abuse. It's seen a little weather, but still perfectly usable. And uh, to round it up, kind of like a 14-inch griddle there, a little bale mountain griddle. Well, that's it, guys. That's what I had for you. Uh, that's all the pieces. Well, that's what we had for YouTube. Just wanted to share my collection and show you what I've got going on. I'm going to leave you all today with some of the before pictures because everything that you've seen in this video, with the exception of the two new lodges and the one little BSR cornbread skillet, have been stripped and reseasoned by me, and I've cooked on just about every piece in there. Not all of them, but just about. So, that said, guys, you know how it goes. I do appreciate you watching the videos, checking out the channel, leaving the comments and all that good stuff. Please, y'all do me a favor, stay safe and stop back. Thank you very much for watching.